Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Somebody to be on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. I'm here at my grandma's place. I'm in the back room, got everything set up, making some videos for you guys. Uh, this is Cilio, Tales of a New Dawn. We're gonna just jump right back into it, guys. My voice is gonna be probably a little bit lower because I have other people in the in the building. I don't wanna, you know, I don't wanna upset them and such with my furry nonsense. But <laughs> anyway, guys, please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes. Want to entertain you? Let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you're up, and let's go. Okay. <clears throat> Of course! The two of us began walking through the festival in search of something new to do. Hey, look at that ice cream parlor. Strawberry ice cream, only 99 cents per scoop. We should get some. Diego, we just had burgers. S so? The... Hmm? Huh? W what's wrong? It it's... Oh. Diego, look at ya. Dress up all fancy and the like. Who you trying to impress? This is my work uniform. Now what the fuck do you want? How rude, and here I am trying to be all friendly. Like hell, get out of here! And who's this? Kyrix looked me up and down, his face contorted into a, into a foul grin. Brian, you chose this fool over my invitation? Come on, you're, you're much too good looking to be hanging around with a nutcase like Diego. Fuck off! What are you gonna do, hit me? Come on, you might be an idiot, but you're not dumb enough to try that. Go away, leave us alone. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. He began to circle around, and stopping at my side. He reached a finger under my chin, which I smacked away. You know, the offer is still available, should you want something better than that mutt. I think you should leave. Your wish, my command. Oh, wow, yeah, I really don't like Kyrex anymore. Wow, he's a piece of shit. He chuckled and walked away, leaving the two of us, leaving the two of us to stand in the middle of the street, processing what just happened. Looking over to Diego, he was still frozen in the same position he had been when the raptor had appeared, with the exception of a few tears running down his cheeks. You know him? What invitation? I kept running into him at the gym. There's a reason I haven't been in, the, uh, there's a reason I haven't been in a few days. Come. I gently grabbed his arm and gave him a gentle pull, signaling for him to follow me, which he did. Nearby, there were stairs leading up to the forested hills of the northern woodcrest. I decided to lead him here, to lead him there, away from the lights and all the noise where the two of us would hopefully be alone. Diego and I had climbed the steps up to the grassy field overlooking Woodcrest. The area had no lights, illuminated only by the soft glow of the moon and the glow of the city below us. I found myself a nice patch, a nice patch of grass to sit on and motioned for Diego to do the same. He sat down and he sat down beside me. You, you never did tell me about his invitation. Well, he kept... I'm going to lower this music because this music might be actually be copyrighted. It sounds like some maybe... Copyright music. There you go. Okay, that's bad. Okay. Well, he kept bothering me while I was trying to work out at the gym. He kept asking questions and giving unsolicited advice. I see. Did he say anything about me? He mentioned an ex. Said he was happy on his own. How he felt tied down and restricted. He never said anything that would lead me to believe it was you, though. Of course. That's typical of him. Anyway, he was definitely trying to get into my pants. He even invited me back for what sounded like an orgy at the gym today. Fucking asshole. Of course I didn't go. I didn't want to be a part of it. I'm glad. I'm I'm sorry for having kept you in the dark about this. I, I can tell you if you want. Well, if you're comfortable with it. I wouldn't say comfortable, but I owe you an explanation at least, so I want to. By all means, please. Well, we started dating, like, I don't know, not quite a year back. We met at the gym. I guess I was lonely. I had friends and all that, but, you know, I wanted, to, I wanted something more. And he, well, he paid a lot of attention to me. He was super upbeat and enthusiastic. He would drop everything to spend time around me, feed me all these nice compliments. It was all an act. We slept together a few times, and I kind of thought we were involved in some capacity. I mean, he outright said so at one point. I know now that he was just saying whatever he needed to say to, say, to say to keep me on the hook. After a while, I don't know, he got bored of me, I guess. He changed. I didn't want to spend time with him. He didn't want to spend time with me anymore. He didn't really care to see me. He was always off doing his own thing without me. I guess it only made me feel more lonely. After a while, I figured out a method of catching his attention. If there was, if there was sex in it for him, he'd show. Wouldn't stay for long, wouldn't care to spend any time with me, but he'd show. And after a while, even that stopped. I learned he was sleeping around with others. Hell, he was like the town bike in a sense. It sounded like everybody had a, everybody had, had a ride. I started avoiding the gym, terrified I'd catch him in the act. Ignorance is bliss and all that. Before it all went down, I was training really hard. I was in great shape. I had a body like ties, believe it or not. But like I said, I stopped going to the gym, stopped training. Now look at me. In a way... In a way, he's responsible for how out of shape I've become, but I can fairly, but I can't fairly blame that solely on him. I had alternative options, but 
With everything that was going on, I struggled to find the motivation to do it. Anyway, I held on like an idiot, missing the person he once was, the person he, the person he pretending to be at the beginning. I hadn't yet realized that person did not even exist. I tricked myself into thinking he was still that person somewhere deep down. That's how. That's just how he tricks people, you know. Lures them in with the act, gets what he wants, and then discards them when they're no longer useful to him. When he's grown bored of them, or there's nothing left for him to take. Over the time we were together, he said a lot of terrible and hurtful things to me. He put me down constantly insulted my hobbies and the things I enjoyed, and he manipulated the hell out of me. Anytime we'd fight, it was always my fault, even if I'd done nothing wrong. If he had done, if, if he had, if he had nothing he could use against me, he changed the argument to be about something else and called me stupid for not understanding that from the start. I felt so used, so worthless. I genuinely believed I was the problem and that he was right. I genuinely believed I was a horrible partner to him. I've never been mentally ill before, but with him, I had a frequent and crippling anxiety. They had me on these pills to try and straighten me out. They did nothing. I'm convinced that I was experiencing what I was experiencing was just symptoms of the relationship. Symptoms of how I was feeling. Since we split, the anxiety had stopped entirely. And the worst part is, somewhere deep down I knew all along. At the beginning, I remember thinking to myself, this isn't right. This isn't forever. But I guess, I guess I was desperate. I clung on for dear life regardless. I didn't want to have to be alone again. I wanted to be loved. I wanted someone that cared for me. For the longest time, I was convinced that he could be that person, but I was never more alone or more unloved than when we were together. Three weeks ago today, I went to the gym. I saw him there, and I confronted him. I had a lot of time alone to process everything, to figure it out just who he really was and what his goals were. I confronted him with all of it. And do you know what he did? He fucking smirked. Then he returned a few low blows of his own. Things I knew weren't true, but that he was just saying to hurt me, yet they still hurt a lot. I cut him out of my life after that. Blocked him everywhere and on everything. It hurt like hell. I still loved him somewhere deep down, or at least that person he pretended to be, but I was done. I spent the following two weeks just existing. Ty. Ty let me have some time off pay, pay to process it all, and he was good to he was a good ear to me. I could bleed to him, you know? He helped me haphazardly tape myself back together, less broken, but still fragile. The wounds are still very raw and it still hurts like hell. But I know that it's not but I know that it's over now. I know that I can take the time to heal from it all and that I'm out of that horrible situation I was in. And honestly, going back to work was the best thing for me. It kept me distracted. It didn't hurt so badly when my mind was busy with other things. But then afterwards, I'd come home from work and just cry. And then... And then... You arrived. When I did, I had no idea anything had happened. You hit it pretty well. You're a wonderful distraction. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm rambling. No, it's fine. I really appreciate you telling me this. To be honest, I have been wondering about it. I'm sorry I kept it from you. It's okay. I understand. I couldn't imagine the pain Diego was feeling. After all, I'd never been in a situation like it myself. I think my best friend of many years was dealing with something so awful. I was heartbroken. I felt a strong urge to take him in my arms, hold him, hug him, protect him from people like Kyrax. I wanted to do everything in my power to help him heal. I wanted to make him happy again put aside my reservations and pulled him into a tight hug. He began crying once more. Oh. Oh, it's so... Oh, God, it's so sad. Oh, God. Why does it have to be this sad? Oh, my God, it's so sad. I is this okay? Diego brushed the tears from his eyes before he responded. It's all I've wanted for a long, for the longest time. Oh God, you poor big boy! Come here, you. Give you a big squeeze. We couldn't say how long we spent side by side on that hill. By the time we had returned to town, the festival was wrapping up, and the crowds had already largely dispersed. Once we arrived home, we each retired to our respective rooms with nary a delay nor a word spoken between us. I closed my eyes and drifted off to sleep, hoping to put the tumultuous day behind me. Hmm. <laughs> I guess that Kyrax is a very messed up person deep down. That he's actually probably very afraid of opening up to people. Genuinely opening up. So it feels like maybe he has to keep everybody at an arm's length. And he has to be the stronger guy. He has to be the alpha. You know, he can't be hurt. He can't show any sign of weakness. Yeah, I know how that goes. 
This morning I awoke and prepared breakfast for Diego as I had done previously. The two of us were seated on the couch side by side, eating our meals together. Diego had been noticeably more subdued than usual today. I can only surmise for our discussion atop the hill the previous night was the cause, or at least related. I understood. Even back then, Diego was never the type to talk at great length about his feelings or show any weakness. He was larger than life, infectiously upbeat, and always seemed bulletproof. Far from, uh, far from the Diego I'd seen glimpses of, uh, of over the past week, his facade was cracked, still holding it together, but occasionally exposing the soft center beneath. As much as I liked Diego back then, seeing him vulnerable made him less of a caricature and far more real to me. I could better relate to his newfound sensitivity, even though it was the byproduct of trauma. I felt somewhat guilty about feeling that way, but I felt I better understood the inner workings of his mind and was better equipped to empathize with him than ever before. Consequently, I felt as though my connection to him had grown deeper. In a sense, it was something unspoken. Ty had revealed Diego's feelings for me in an attempt to prepare me for what laid, uh, laid ahead. But regardless of knowing ahead of time, that bond between us was something I could feel on my own. Despite the awkward circumstances, Diego's leg was touching mine as we sat side by side having breakfast. He didn't seem to mind, and nor did I. It was something that all those years ago would have resulted in one of us pulling away, perhaps an awkward laugh or a gay joke, but now? It brought me comfort, and I believe Diego, Diego felt the same way. These breakfast burgers are amazing. Why'd I never think of this? Diego took the final bites of his meal and laid his plate down on the table whilst licking his lips gluttonously. My phone was ringing. Gazing upon the screen, I noticed Ty was calling. An awful shame. Diego had the day off today. I didn't exactly want to be called in. Let's see. I believe I can turn the music a little bit here. There you go. Hello? Good morning, Brian. How are you keeping? I'm good, just finishing breakfast. What can I do for you? Well, this is something of an unusual request, but I was wondering if you could visit me at my house today. Huh? I wanted to talk to you about something. About Diego. I saw what happened last night. Is he present? It is probably best not to discuss it if so. Yeah, you're right. Either way, it would be most appreciated if you would pay me a visit. I have come up with an idea which may help, but I would like to share it with you first. Uh, okay, sure. My address is 5 Alabaster Place. It is rather close to the Southern Bridge. Alright, I'll see you a little later on then. A little later on then. Until then. I hung up the call and looked up to Diego's expectant gaze, perhaps curious as to the context of the discussion. That was Ty, right? Did he call you in? No, uh, he just wanted to catch up with me. Training related, I think. Ah, makes sense. He usually doesn't work on Sundays. Well, strange. I guess he's making a special trip? Yeah, I guess so. Anyway, I'd better head out. I don't want to keep him waiting. Sweet. See you when you get back. Diego still seemed rather reserved and not his usual bubbly self. I didn't know what Ty had, 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 in, had in store for me, but perhaps it was something that could help cheer him up. I had soon arrived at Ty's place, thankfully being not too far from Diego's. It seemed that was true of everywhere, perks of a small town, one would guess. I confirmed the email address I'd been given was right. Ty's house was quite fancy. I supposed it matched the bar in his usual outfit, in a sense. Everything had to be classy. Which is why I was so surprised when Ty emerged from the house. Not in his usual getup, but something unexpectedly casual. Oh my. Ah, you have arrived. Good to see you, Brian. Come in. Ooh, that is a nice place. The inside of his house was also rather fancy. It was upmarket with a rustic vibe, much like his bar was, which of course only drew further attention toward his outfit. I was used to ties to, to I was used to ties, vests, and button-up shirts, but this was something else. Whatever is the matter, you seem transfixed. Oh, sorry, I just I haven't seen you dress so casually before. It caught me by surprise. Well, I cannot dress as a refined gentleman all day every day, after all. On my days off I aim to be comfortable above all else. It makes a lot of sense, actually. So, what was it you called me here for? Ty, prompt, Ty prompted by my words, reached into his pocket, pulled out a folded up piece of paper, and handed it to me in silence. I opened it up and found it was a flyer for some sort of fighting tournament taking place soon. Well, what do you think? What do you mean? It's a competition. I looked over the flyer more closely. All combat styles allowed. $5,000 cash prize. Entries closed. There was some sort of stain in the top right corner. I am of the mind that Diego would benefit from participating. Diego? Really? I mean, he's definitely strong, but would he really be any good at this? He participated last year and made it to the quarterfinals. I would wager he is stronger now than he was then, so I expect he would do quite well indeed. Alright, but why do you think it, was, it would be good for him? It's not like he needs the cash. Excuse the change of topic, but I expect Diego has filled you in the following encounter last night. 
Yeah, he has. Well, Kyrex was not good to Diego. Among many things, Diego's self-esteem is not what it used to be. His self-worth is greatly lacking. I think if Diego were enrolled in such a tournament, it would give him a reason to train, and would, which would be both a welcome distraction and a motivation to work on himself. In working on himself, with the right support and encouragement, his self-esteem will improve. Not that this is not a universal truth, rather a specific response to Diego's own vanity. It may not be evident to you now, but Diego cares greatly about his appearance. Unfortunately, with everything that went on, this was allowed to slide, being one of the many reasons for his lacking self-esteem. Now, I do not propose this is an easy fix, and doubt Diego will agree to participate without some encouragement, and I doubt he will stick his stick at it for long without the right support. Furthermore, I know that Kyrex is a regular at the local gym, a perfectly valid reason why Diego would not wish to attend. I have solutions for each of these matters. I understand. What are your solutions? First, to tackle the gym issue. Ty, Ty reached into his pocket and pulled out a small wad of cash before handing it to me. What? What's this for? I would request that you use this money to buy some exercise equipment. That way Diego will be able to exercise at home and will not need to, not, will not need to brave the gym. Are you sure? This is a lot of money. Absolutely certain. You see, I will sponsor his participation in the tournament. Consider this something of a signing bonus if it helps you to sleep easier. I guess, but hold on. The poster said the tournament was closed for new entries. Indeed. I wish to forfeit my own participation and offer to Diego instead. You were going to fight? Of course. These muscles are not just for show, you know. My involvement was strictly for my own amusement. I am certain Diego would stand to benefit from it far more than I. Which, of course, brings me to the, ma the, uh, to the other matter. Diego will need support and encouragement from someone he trusts. Are you offering to be his coach? Who? Me? While I have every confidence that I could, I would consider that a position best left for you. Me? A fighting coach? Have you lost your mind? Please do not misunderstand. Diego knows how to fight. He may be rusty, but he can do it. All he needs is encouragement and support. And while I could certainly offer that, what better opportunity to bring the two of you closer together? Jeez, Ty, this is a tall order. I understand. I expect you will have your work cut out for you just getting to him to participate. But he cares about you. He will listen to you he listen to you as much, if not more, than he would me. I believe this will not only benefit Diego, but your relationship together, too. And I suspect he may see this as an opportunity to impress you. Feeling the way he does, he would truly be mad to turn it down. What are you, Cupid or something? A peculiar-looking one, perhaps, but I do concede I do enjoy watching the lovebirds flock. That aside, may I count on your assistance in this matter? I'll give it my best shot. I can't promise anything, but I'll try. Ah, lovely. I think Diego is most likely to have someone like you by his side. I mean, hold your horses. We're not even dating. Perhaps not, but with the way things are going. <laughs> Ty had filled me in on his plan to help rebuild Diego's self-esteem. It was an interesting tactic for sure, but Ty always seemed to know far more than he let on. I figured the best move was to play along and see how things go. Honestly, it was peculiar at just how invested Ty was in Diego's well-happiness. Ty had said Diego was lucky to have me, but at this rate, I consider him much more lucky to have Ty. Ty came across as something of a guardian angel, working behind the scenes to support Diego and to help him find his happiness, and it seemed like I was an instrumental piece in, Di in Ty's plan. Not that I minded so much, after all. I wanted Diego to be happy as well. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks or tip if you can, it always helps. And until the next video, I love you all, I'll see you next time. Bye bye